we're very privileged not only to have Wyrick Robbins as a sponsor for the second time here with us, so also a premier sponsor of this event, but we're very honored and proud to have him as our moderator for tonight's event. I, I think I told Larry, I told you this the other day, if I ever meet anybody that doesn't know you, I'm going to be shocked. And I will tell you, every time I, I'm involved in a conversation, the words Larry Robbins come out of my mouth, they, they inevitably say, oh, yeah, I know Larry. Most of it in a positive way, Larry. Most of it. I don't think I have to go through all his credentials, but I will tell you that he represents a firm that I think exemplify his own characteristics. But he is without a doubt one of the sharpest legal minds I've ever run into. But on top of that, he is also one of the sharpest business minds I've ever run into. I have the occasion to work with him with clients, but also as part of his giving back to the community, we both coach with the EMBA program at Keenan Flagler, and I've seen him at work, and I've seen him coaching uh, executive MBAs, and it is, is quite a thrill and a treat to have him here tonight as our moderator. So help me welcome Larry Robbins. Well, hopefully we'll have some uh, fun this evening with... Uh this extraordinary group of entrepreneurs that we have, and I, I really do feel like I can say without uh, any hesitation that uh, this is a, an entrepreneur's group of entrepreneurs. Uh, extraordinary experience in uh, their industry, uh, success uh, over a long period of time, and uh, success in troubling times. And so it really is not <clears throat> all that difficult for us uh, in this environment to discuss the macro things that are creating extreme difficulties for uh, not only small and medium-sized businesses, but, uh, but all of us, uh, whether it's uh, deficit reduction and a looming deadline that we uh, have coming up, uh, whether or not this uh, special committee can come up with uh, $1.3 trillion of cuts or whether we go directly to half a billion Social Security and half a billion in uh, defense will be interesting to see how that affects all of our businesses. Uh, Health care legislation, we have it, it passed, and <clears throat> whether some portions of it will uh, stay with us is uh, probably going to be known by the, uh, the, the end of next summer when the Supreme Court takes a look at the mandatory health care coverage, and we can all place our bets on how that will uh, end up, but if the court stays uh, the same as it uh, looks right now, doesn't look like the, the mandatory feature of health care will uh, continue with us. So for small businesses, that's going to be a, a, a big issue. Uh, with uh, the elections looming in uh, 2012, of course, uh, for the Republicans to get a trifecta would be perhaps not all that um, unexpected. However, in order to repeal health care, uh, I think we... Uh, it's, it's highly unlikely that uh, the Republicans will get to 60 senators in the, the Senate, and, and that's really what they would have to have in order for the rest of our legislation to, uh, to, to really uh, be reversed. And so I, I think uh, health care services, uh, individuals and professionals, we're going to have to live with it. And as small business folks, uh, we're going to have to deal with that. Again, on the macro level, if we... Uh, Read the Wall Street Journal in the, the morning. You can take a bet. If uh, the news about um, anyone in Europe <clears throat> is positive, then the, the stock market is probably going to have uh, a pretty good day. And if we have anyone in the, the headlines uh, where uh, their government is faltering or their ability to pay their debts is uh, questioned, we're going to have a bad day in the stock market. And good and bad days <clears throat> in the, the last couple of years have not been measured by being up or down 15 or 20 points, but uh, several hundred points. So we're going to have to deal with uh, volatility uh, for all of us and uh, whether that affects our uh, ability to, to raise capital or our 401k. Uh, it's, it's an impact at the macro level that we have very little that we can do at our individual business uh, with respect to any of those things that we've just talked about. On the other hand, <clears throat> we can run our business. And the, the managers and the operators who have been most successful in maintaining and uh, creating positive uh, earnings trends and uh, positive cash flow, positive uh, EBITDA for their, their businesses, their managers, their operators, 
They're not uh, theoretical in uh, their practice. They're hands-on and they get in and they get things done. And so our group of entrepreneurs that we have uh, this evening uh, are really extraordinary. And what we're going to do um, in terms of the, the program this evening is introduce them one at a time and <clears throat> then let each of them speak to you about their thoughts for success in an extraordinarily difficult uh, environment. What are their keys to success? And as we all know, in, in many cases, uh, running a business is, is not ideally uh, for the, the managers to be reactive, uh, but to operate uh, as if you're in a chess match, thinking two or three steps ahead. What's going to be next? How are you going to deal with these difficult uh, environments? <clears throat> 